welcome back to this short video series on an introduction to robotics. In our last video, we learned that a circuit is a complete path through which electricity flows and includes a power source like a battery, conducting material like metal or jumper wire, a load like an LED or a light emitting diode, and a resistor to slow the current down and keep our circuit safe. We also compared a circuit to a tight-knit group of friends, and we'll continue using this analogy in today's video. Today, we'll learn how to use a breadboard to build a circuit. A breadboard helps to connect the different parts of a circuit together. We can imagine the breadboard like a guidance counselor that helps the group of friends to communicate with each other when they need a little extra support. So, how does the breadboard work and how does it help us build a circuit? So here you can see a breadboard um, and we see on the outside uh, a bunch of holes, right? So we have um, all these different rows of holes. We see some letters on the top, some numbers uh, running down both sides. And then we also see uh, kind of a two separate sections on each side of the breadboard uh, with a positive a uh, red line running down and a, uh, a negative symbol with a blue or sometimes black line uh, running down the side as well. I'd like to reveal what's going on underneath is the best way to, to learn this. So I'm just gonna take off that plastic or the, the sticky part underneath. So you can see uh, that essentially underneath all of those holes are these metal plates. Um, that are connecting each row of holes or columns of holes, as you can see on the sides, together. So these metal plates help us connect each part of the circuit together. Each row of five holes on our breadboard um, are connected by one metal plate, and these are called terminal strips. Any components that are in the same row or terminal strip are essentially connected to each other because of that metal plate underneath. The two long metal plates on each side of the breadboard um, are referred to as power rails. And each metal plate you can see is labeled with a positive and negative uh, line showing that you know, each column of these holes are connected with one long metal plate. The power rails are there for us to connect a power source for our circuit onto our board. Um, our breadboard does not have any power within it. It's just made up of plastic and these metal, um, metal plates. So we need to connect power to it in order to build our circuit. A common mistake when you're first learning how to use a breadboard is to put the same electrical component in one row of your breadboard. So I'll show you what I mean. If we have an LED, uh, you can see it has two you know, metal legs sticking out of it. Um, and sometimes people will put both ends of the LED into the same row. Let's say we're both on row nine. And so as Essentially, what this does is create a closed loop or a short circuit because both ends of those, uh, both ends of the LED are actually essentially connected together now because of that metal plate underneath. This doesn't allow us to connect this LED to any other part of our circuit. You always want to make sure that one electrical component is uh, one end of it is in one row and the other end is in a different row. It doesn't matter which rows you choose. Um, but we essentially want to orient our LED or any other electrical component like a jumper wire, uh, resistor, whatever it may be, um, so that each end is in a different row. This will allow us connection points so we can connect that to the rest of our circuit. Let's now build a circuit that you see in the diagram using our breadboard. A good place to start is uh, connecting your battery or your power source to the power rails on your breadboard. So I have a nine volt battery and I have a handy little uh, battery connector clip here that looks like this. Um, so that just allows me to, to snap this on um, so that I don't have to hold any wires against the battery. And um, the black wire is negative and red is positive in electronics. So something you wanna keep in mind. 
If you don't have this, all you have to do is use uh, two separate jumper wires and you'll have to just hold them on, on your battery like this. So you wanna connect one jumper wire to the positive terminal and the other jumper wire to the negative terminal. And remember, all of these holes that are running from top to bottom beside this blue line are connected with one long metal plate. So it doesn't matter which one I choose. I can choose the hole up here in the middle, any hole, it doesn't matter. Connected to the negative side of our battery is our resistor. And if you remember from our last video, the resistor does not have any polarity, meaning there's no uh, negative or positive side to my resistor. So uh, it doesn't matter which way you orient this. So to connect this to the negative side of my battery, I'm going to connect one end of my resistor to the negative power rail. Because remember, that's going to connect to this jumper wire via the metal plate underneath. Doesn't matter where I place this side of my resistor, it could be any one of the remaining holes on this negative power rail. So I'll just go ahead and use one of the ones up here. And the other end of my resistor has to connect to uh, any other metal plate on the board so I can continue building my circuit. So I'm gonna connect that to one of the terminal strips. It doesn't matter which, which row. Um, I'll go ahead and just connect it all the way over here, which is row five on the other side of my breadboard. Just a note as well, um, this row five, A through E, is not connected to row five, F through J. Now I have my negative side of my battery connected to my resistor and I have to continue completing the circuit and as we can see in our diagram um, the next part of the circuit is our LED. So uh, remembering from our last video uh, an LED does have polarity so it has a long leg and a short leg um, and the short leg refers to the side that has to connect back to the negative terminal of the battery whereas the long leg uh, connects to the positive terminal of the battery. So uh, remember this resistor is connected to the negative terminal of my battery so if I'm adding my LED now I have to make sure it's the short leg and that short leg has to go into the same row as my this end of my resistor so that's row 5 I'll just select I5 and the other leg has to go into a, a different row, row 8 in this case and I'm almost there, right? So I have to close my circuit now and I can see uh, from my diagram again or I just know that this, these are all the parts of my circuit and I need to connect this LED back to the positive side of my battery. So I will use a jumper wire to do that. So I'm gonna take one end of my jumper wire and connect that to the same row as the long leg of my LED, row eight and the other end of my jumper wire is going to go to the positive power rail. And you'll see your LED will turn on, ta-da! How exciting. The best way to practice using a breadboard is to build simple circuits like this again and again and again. So you can take this apart and build it another place on your breadboard or you can try to build a second circuit on here using another LED uh, with another resistor. So I'll do that now and I encourage you to do this as many times as you can uh, to kind of get the hang of uh, a breadboard. Out our next video where we'll connect a circuit like this to a programmable board where we can do something more exciting with this LED. Thanks for joining me today and see you next time.